When the wise men saw the star in the east, there was much joy and jubilation. And for me, out of joy, we get happiness, we get joyfulness, we can become joyous. So joy is to be spread. We should spread it abroad, not to keep it for ourselves. Share the joy. And the writers have also written about the joy bells. You know, joy, joy, joy. People would say, why are you so joyous? Or you joyfully did that or the other because it's what's inside. You can't drink it. And we know how this joy came about. When the wise men saw the star in the east and they followed it from afar, that is when the joy came. Through Jesus Christ sending his only begotten son to us. And we're nicely dressed up, nicely attired, coming into the sanctuary. And the faces, the faces sometimes don't represent anything that spells J-O-Y. Whether we're limping, standing tall on our own, pulling in the tummies and looking prim, we should see the joy on the faces. I was told it's 10 minutes. I don't know if 10 minutes, if anyone is keeping check. There's much, much more I can elaborate on to do with joy. But I will say joy is an inner feeling and it shows on your faces and it's something that should be shared. When I look at Brother Ryan over there, I can see J-O-Y and he can't help for giving a good smile, and I think that smile is infectious. So let us all seek to find that joy, because this joy will leave us if we encourage it, if we put our trust in Almighty God, because he's the joy giver. I know someone who has a website, and she's talking about the joy stick, trying to get couples to be more loving and kind to each other, and how they can, you know, have a good life as married couples. And she calls it the joystick. I haven't tuned in because I seem to be having a bit of problem, but wherever the joystick is, leave it. I'm happy with the joy which I have within. So joy to the Lord. This is my definition of joy. Amen. So the passage I chose for this morning, well, I chose a number of passages, but I decided to go with Hebrews 6, 7 to 12, and this speaks about, and it says, land that drinks in the rain, often falling upon it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessings of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. The final the verse 12 says, We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through patience and faith inherit what has been promised. So to put this into context, just as a gardener works hard to keep their crops or their plants free of weeds, we, as children of God, must keep ourselves free from sin. So a gardener will go out, they put on their gloves, and they get them on their hands and knees, and they start to pull the weeds. And regardless of how tired the process might seem, they keep on going, no matter how tired they are, because if they don't, they know that their weeds, will, their plants will become overrun, and the thorns and everything will destroy their plants and they'll be back at square one with nothing. So they continuously go and they pull their weeds. So we as believers in Christ must continuously seek to keep weeds while sin out of our lives. So how do we do this? How do we keep weeds out of our lives? Um, 
we must persevere. Blessed is the one who perseveres under, this is James 1.12, sorry. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1.12, I'm going from the NIV version. So we must persevere. So what is perseverance, you know? Perseverance is the continuous or continued effort to do or to achieve something despite difficulties, trials, or despite opposition. You know, again, let's put this into context. You might have a difficulty at work or you might have a difficult task to do. You know, so say for instance, we have all been Christmas cleaning, we all been getting everything done. You know, and we want to make sure that it's right for this one big day, this one big day. But we sometimes we lose sight of what it really is about. So, but we still, no matter how tired we are, we still put up curtains, we go to town, we shop for the whole day. You know, we clean every single window in the house, we sweep every single corner of the house. We change every mat, every towel, you know, every bed sheet, every hand towel, everything. We change everything. Every if door handles gotta get changed, curtains, window curtains, everything is changed. Then the table has to be set. New cutlery might have to be bought because you don't want the cutlery from last year. New napkins, you know, new placemats, new everything. You know, and regardless of how tired we are, we make sure that the house is perfect for that day. You know, so persevere like that. Persevere for that one big day so that we will get what God has promised for us. You know, so what kind, what was the other one? Yes, so God wants us to work tirelessly in weeding out that sin out of our lives. So in order to do this, um, we must ask God to clean it out. First, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can also find encouragement through meetings, such as Bible study, or just simply coming and gathering as one. You know, James 1 verse, 1 verse 4 says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You know, so my final few points here I have, what reward does God promise for those who persevere? And like I said, it is a continuous effort to do something in spite of challenges. So what reward does he have for us in spite of these challenges? And it says here in Hebrews 10:24 to 25, let us consider how we may spur one, is there one? Yeah, no, sorry, Romans 2, 6 to 7 says, to his followers, God will repay each person according to what they have done. To the one who is persistent in doing good, who seeks glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. So that will be your reward for our persistence, eternal life. And what better reward is that? You know, what better reward is that? So when we encourage others, you know, when we spur each other on, when our fellow brother or sister is in difficulties and we encourage them, you know, we also are helping them to persevere. It's not only a, you know, a self thing, you know, it's not just me, 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 me. Sometimes you have to help others, you know, to keep on going, to be persistent, to push them because you want, you don't want your friend or your family member to be left behind. So you want to encourage them you know, as well as encourage yourself, because sometimes you must push yourself to be better or do better, you know? So that is something that you must do. So despite any hardships that we may face, you know, the word of God says to encourage and to persevere, but, on, but also to remain steadfast. Remain steadfast so that we will receive 
what has been promised for his people, the people of God, you know, the believers. So when we persevere, and others watch us and see us persevering in spite of our trials, that not only, you know, compels them or encourages them to do better or be better, but it sets an example, you know, of despite what she may have done or what she may have endured, she still came out successful or on top, or she was on, on the winning side, you know? She was you know, she, re she received or he received what was entitled, what was promised to them. Thank you. Good morning. I hope he's prepared for this. <laughs> I, I was not prepared for anything. So, hope. I knew Hope, and Hope was a very lovely girl. She always expected the biggest things. Hope gave, always gave that feeling of great expectations. Pastor Allen, you've ever met Hope? Hope and faith walked together every step of the journey. They never faltered and they never failed. Hope, when you think you're about to give up, is that push behind you that says there's something better. Hope always leaves you wanting to find more. And you know what, Pastor Ali, be nervous, but I hope he overcomes. <laughs> deep within, you know, sometimes we come on struggles and you feel like giving up or you may say, why am I doing this? My children this morning get up. We need to go to church last night. We are going to church tomorrow. It is casual. You can wear whatever you want. Seven o'clock, Keisha and Caleb get up. But we ain't going to church and we sleeping. No, we hope these children understand that today God gave us life. I've gone in the bath ready and dressed. And I'm hoping that my children don't add stress to my life. You believe that 20 past eight, both of them laying down on the carpet, hoping that I don't soak them with water. I want to understand how hope this gear faith to go on. No. 8 30 news on. Them no going to decide. Then want breakfast. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And the hope that drives me to get to church said to me, do not kill those children. Just get ready. I hope that when you go to the door, they're behind you. So, 10 minutes to 9, I dress from head to toe and ready to the door. The two of them behind there like snails, hoping I don't drag them through the door. Now get this, I go in church, it's the last Sunday of the year. I tell them children so, look at how God saved our lives from COVID, and then they're playing the, all right. So, I am ready. What I did, being a nice mommy, I cut a piece of cake. I know they're hungry, can they have breakfast? I put Lil Moby in the flat, and I start to say, I got my keys, I won't want to ready come along. <laughs> People still struggling to find shoes. Want to understand how hope does drive you? Does push you to succeed? There is no way you can lose hope. Anytime you feel like losing hope, just look around and say to yourself, I have overcame and I have not killed. I will proceed and I will receive before the Lord has promised me that if I keep hope, if I persevere and I have faith and the joy of the Lord that is within me builds my strength, I will never fail. Pastor Ali, I hope you get that 
a message. <laughs> and you know why he called me at here? Because I got so much hope to give. I got hope to share. Now I get this morning, like I could not sleep. 2.30, I up. Doing what only Father Lord knows. I up. So I didn't energize and ready to come to church. I prayed, I praised, you know, sing a psalm and a santi. So I didn't ready, really ready. I going through my phone, status, guys, check everybody, status, just want to know, I scroll. And I seeing people saying, for 2020, I'm cutting off friends, and I feeling this, and I doing that. And I decided that they're talking bare nonsense. Because you want the backbiters, the haters, the naysayers, the faith killers to fuel your hope. Because you see all the people they saw behind you that saying you can't succeed. Deep down in Lord, the God says, I shall direct your what? Okay then. And if you have the light of the Lord within you, can you fail? I hope you remember that. And I hope you understand that the Lord that has given us life has given us the gift that nothing we shall lack. I hope you remember that. So, now I've explained hope. You have met hope. You have met my friend Faith. I say, I do.